breakthroughs, Lord God. I thank you for those things that we have been waiting for, that we will see them come to pass, Lord. I just thank you, Lord God, even tonight, Lord God. I glorify your name, Lord God. Thank you for your presence, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you strengthen us even in your presence, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that the battle is yours, Lord God, and the victory is ours, Lord God. We just claim that victory even tonight, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We praise you, Lord God. We adore you tonight, Father. We magnify your name, Lord God. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're so good, Lord. Thank you, 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 Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord God. You're so good, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God's moving tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a refreshing that God's giving you strength to keep going. Not to give up, not to turn away. To keep your eyes on Him no matter what is happening. Keep your eyes on Him. He's the way maker. It's not about us. I just feel like there's so much, there's so much um um, that we're trying to make things happen in our own. But you guys, it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with the Lord. Right. And we just got to let go and say thank you, Lord. Yes. Begin to thank him for that, that, he, that you're expecting to see. Begin to thank him. You know, we've been praying and praying and praying. Well, it's time to begin to thank him for it. Lord, we thank you, Father. Yes. We thank you for the opportunity. Study the women in the Bible. 
First meeting will be at Peter Piper Pizza, Saturday, April 29th at 11 a.m. See Emily DiCochea for more details. We're excited to announce our next prophetic conference, Thursday, September 7th through Saturday, September 9th. Be sure to mark your calendars. More information to come. Can you sing? Can you play an instrument? Would you like to try out for our worship team? If Do you have a desire to learn and worship God with a tambourine? Would you like to join our Unity Tambourine Group? Speak with Gloria Camerano for more information. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. I tell you what, it is wonderful to be back here tonight. Amen. Uh, I know that we trying to adopt a, a tradition here that we wanted to invite people, new people to come to church. And uh, what we were um, sharing, if you able to bring someone first time being here at church, we are going to give them a Starbucks car. <laughs> so though if you want to please I want to encourage you guys bring your friends next week. Amen. Because we want that our whole purpose is to get as many people to come here so we they can listen to the word of God because that is what going to change us. Not the Starbucks car. Uh, but we want the people to come and be in the presence of God because the presence of God, that is what's going to change us. Amen. So I just want to use that, if you can use that as an incentive to invite your friends, relatives, hey, come, let's go to see the devil on Thursday night. And that's the first time you're going to get a, a, a Starbucks gift card. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So anyway. I wanted to share tonight about the offering. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for your giving. Your giving, that's what helped us to continue on as a church, pay our rent, pay all the other expenses, so we can continue to gather together and meet in the house of God. Amen? His word says to bring all the tithes so there will be food in his house, into the store, bring it into the store storehouse so there will be food. In other words, when we come into his house, we get to hear the word. It's his word that's what's going to feed us, that's what's going to preserve us, because his word says that man can live by bread alone, but by every every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen? Amen? And that's why we gather together. It is to hear the word of God because that is what's going to preserve us. That is what's going to help us when we face a crisis, when we go through a situation. So anyway, I have this scripture that I wanted to read to you guys tonight that is blessed me and um I wanted to share with you guys tonight. It's found in the book of um, Genesis chapter, I mean, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 8, verse 28. It says, so Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away. What did Pharaoh say to Moses? He said, I'll let you go. I'll let you and God's people go and sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away. And if you know the story that God spoke to Moses to go and deliver his people out from Egypt, Okay, but we know the story. Pharaoh tried everything to keep God's people in bondage. He did not want to let them go. Finally, to the end, he made he still continued to make a deal with Moses. And look at the next deal. Okay, I'll let you guys go. 
I'll let you guys go and only worship out there. I'll let you guys go over there and offer sacrifices to your God. That, but do not go very far. <clears throat> this is one thing I learned. Being a Christian, the enemy will always whisper into your ear. Uh, maybe you show up on Thursday night is good enough. You don't have to pay a tie. <laughs> you don't have to pray. You don't have to be radical for God. You can still live in sin. You can, because nobody will know. Nobody can see it. Just don't be radical. Just don't obey the word of God. Remember in uh, uh, when Satan, when the devil showed up in the garden and told Eve, Eve, you can eat the fruit. And Eve said, no, I was told not to eat the fruit. But then the enemy whispered in her ear, no, listen, if you eat it, your eye will be open. And guess what? She fell into it. And that's my concern. That some <clears throat> God want us. He want a full obedience to his word. If he said that we have to pay our time, we're going to pay our time. Yeah, Otherwise, we will continue to live in bondage. Yeah. And that's what happened. Listen, God rescued his people. God rescued the, the Israelites from the Egypt. And guess what? Then he sent the destruction to destroy the Egyptian, to destroy, destroy Pharaoh. Why? Because they don't obey God. And here is God's people have been living there for a long time. They have learned how to disobey. But I mean to disobey God. And that's why. The bondages came into their lives, but God, but their prayer reached God's ear. And that's why God sent Moses to come and rescue his people. But we need to be very, very careful not to obey or not to listen to what the enemy whispered into our ear. Amen? Amen. Just like what the devil, what, what Pharaoh told uh, Moses, you can go worship. But don't go very far. For example, we can come to church, but we can still play with sin. We don't have to be fully obedient when he said to obey, to pay our time. We don't have to, to be radical, share our faith. We don't have to stand firm and speak against sin. Why? Because I'm okay. I don't want my friends to look at me that I am standing firm. I don't want my friends to think that, I, that, that I'm a radical Christian, that I don't join them drink. I don't join them do drugs. Listen, God wants you and I to make a stand for what's right. Amen? Because when we make a stand for what's right, God will step in and protect us. God will step in and empower us. Don't listen when the enemy whispers into your ear. Just go worship, but don't go very far. Just showing up at church is good enough. You can continue to live in sin. You can continue to look at pornography. Come on. That's what the enemy wants us to do. Why? Because nobody is looking. But he said, we are going to destroy that tonight. Amen? Amen. We are going to cut off all what the enemy is trying to whisper. To. We are going to block our ears from what the enemy is trying to whisper at us. We are going to make a covenant with God tonight that we are going to obey his word. We are going to tell the voice of the enemies, no, I am going to go all the way. And guess what? That's what exactly what God did. Because Moses did not bow down to what Pharaoh suggested. He said, no, this is what God said. Let his people go. 
And I'm going to obey what God said. Why? Because I have family behind me. I have relatives. I have Christians behind me. They have to obey the word of God. Otherwise, they will be destroyed. Amen? And God is looking for men and women tonight like to be like a Moses that will make a stand, obey God's word. I'm not only talking about paying our time. I'm talking about the full gospel of God that we have to obey his word so we can see our family, we can see our city, we can see our church delivered from bondages. Amen? Praise God. And I know giving and paying our tithe is one of God's commandment for all of us. Yes, we can live just showing that. I mean, I, I, just being in church is good enough for me, Meliana. I am not going to be radical doing other things. No. What God is saying to all of us tonight, we are going to obey his word, not only the tithe and offering, but we are going to obey. Don't, I mean, don't come in agreement with sin. We are going to fully obey the word of God. Amen? Praise God. And I just want to say thank you, all of you, for your faithful paying your tithe, because that is what you have been helped us to continue on the, the church. Anyway, if you're going to give, there's online, you go on our website, text to give, or on our website, so, or on the app. So if you want to give in cash or check, wrap it on the pass around the envelope. If you want to, you can raise your hand. And this is one of our sacrifice is giving to the Lord. And that's what, um, that's what uh, Moses told Pharaoh. I want so that's what Moses told Pharaoh, I want you to let the people go so they can give a sacrifice to the Lord. And giving is one of our sacrifice to the Lord. Amen? So if you want to, so if you all lift up your hand, I'm going to pray for you. Lord, I want to say thank you for your word tonight. When it's come to giving, oh God, but I know it's far more, not, not only giving, giving is one of your instruction for us, oh God that we have to obey you. But I pray, oh God, that far beyond that giving, that we have to obey your word, oh God, in every area of our lives. So we can rescue our family, our children, grandchildren, our church, and this city. The only way we can rescue them, oh God, when we turn away from sin and come and worship you, obeying you. And I thank you, Jesus, that for, for your people tonight, oh God, many here tonight, they have been loving you, obeying your word, not only giving in, a, um, obeying the tithe and offering, but they have obeyed your word, oh God, in every area of their lives. And I want to say thank you. I pray, oh God, that you prosper and bless your, your, uh, your church tonight. Bless your people, oh God. Again, this is what they work for. This is the 10% and the offering they have given. They are giving. We're sending it to you tonight. I pray, oh God, that you bless them, prosper them. Guide us, oh God, on how to use it wisely, oh God. I know that we want to buy our own building. Father, I pray, oh God, help us, oh God, to use, use every dime that was given, oh God, so we can use it wisely. So we can also buy our own building and continue to build the work that you have started here in Tucson. I want to say thank you. We love you. We bless you. And we worship you, God, in Jesus' name. Give Jesus a big hand clap as you give the tithes and offering. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. John, do you want to come and um, continue on? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Share the we, word. Do we have any visitors tonight? We have no. We have any visitors tonight? New first do we time. We have any first time visitors? No first time visitors. No well, praise Jesus. We're all family. I felt that today. I I have to tell you, um, we had an amazing time in California. Yes. 
was absolutely incredible. And I'm so thankful for what God had done and what he did this past weekend. And then on Monday, uh, we, you know, of course, we go out to eat every night. I was sitting around, we were talking uh, at the end of service on Monday night. We had an incredible time Monday night as well. And uh, all of a sudden it dawned on me. Because uh, as Pastor Steve and John Bosman were talking, I was listening. But my mind was on the citadel. <laughs> because there is not a day where my mind is not on the citadel. I know. It never go, it never leaves me. I'm so thankful for that. Yes. And I want to say something because I want to say something to this body. I am so thankful for you. Every single day. I'm so thankful. And with that, um, and Louis, who's sitting there, I want to tell you something, Louis. When you called me and shared your testimony a couple of days ago about what happened, yeah, it made every sacrifice worth it. Mm -hmm. Because I, I just want to say something. I want to be really transparent. You know, if all the people we have are just in this room, I'm okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want people to get saved. I want the church to grow. But if that's all we have, I'm okay. I'm still going to do what God called me to do. Are you hearing me? Yes, Jesus. Because I don't ever want any of you to feel pressured. Oh, we got to do this. We got to do this. Right. We got to do this. Because unless the Lord builds a house, yeah. we labor in vain. Come on. Right, right, right. And if all that ever comes is just the handful right here, I'm okay. But you know what I want? Because there, there's three things I'm going to talk about tonight. I haven't, I, I, I mentioned the first two over the last few months, but the third one I haven't. I don't know if you remember, it was a few months ago, and I talked about conflict and how, how con, you know, conflict exposes the depth of the covenant. How many of you ever had conflict? Yes. And whether we grow or not, Guess what we're going to do? We're going to learn how to have healthy conflict. We're going to understand that, that in the middle of conflict, we still love each other. Come on. In the middle of conflict, the covenant is bigger than the conflict. We're going to get that. If we get that, oh my goodness. I feel like I've done my job. But the second thing, and it was because of, it was a, a word that God gave me, and I, and Louie called me and, and reminded me, and I go, oh man, about the character of God. Because let me just tell you, I would rather have a handful of people that know the character of God than 500 people who don't. <laughs> that walk in the character of God. But the third thing I'm going to talk to you about tonight, I'm going to start a little journey. It was probably in the early 90s. Meliana and I, had, had, we got married in 1984. And uh, shortly after that, uh, she was involved. She, she was involved in the church immediately. I was working and not as involved as I, I am now. Then about five years later, it might have been four, four or five years later, we got invited to participate in this marriage class and uh, just attend. And we really liked it because how many know that you could never stop working on your marriage? Mm -hmm. The marriage also could get, always get better. Yeah. And during that time, your life's on, sweetie. Oh. Yeah. And during, during, during that time um, that we were, we were, we were doing that, um, after we went through the class, that's why I'm so thankful for what's happening on Sunday night going through yes. the classes. Yes. You know, so we can grow because that, that's where I began. And uh, after the class, we got we got so involved in it that um, they asked us to teach it. If we teach it the next the next on the next session, and so that put us in a place of responsibility. Well, with that, when we taught those classes.
And uh, when we studied the lessons, there were verses of scripture that I'm going to share tonight in those lessons out of the Song of Solomon. And her and I would read the verses together, talk about it, and then go, wait a minute. There's something more that God is talking to us. Praise God for a healthy marriage. We all yearn and pray for healthy marriages. Healthy relationship. But when we started reading Song of Solomon for the first time, I mean, really reading it, we realized the Holy Spirit wrote this book. The Holy Spirit wrote this revelation that it really wasn't just about how a man and a woman can have a healthy relationship. It was really about our relationship with Jesus. Yes. It was really about this, this love relationship that God is deeply in love with the body of Christ, deeply in love with the bride of Christ. On Saturday, when I was in California, and I preached a message about David, David and Goliath differently than I've ever preached it before, and, and different revelation, and because and I brought out the fact that you know when when David fought Goliath, what was the prize? What was the prize? Because we sing about killing giants, but what was the prize? And what 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 was David going to get if he destroyed Goliath? Saul's daughter. So what does that mean? That means a bride. Come on. That's why we got to destroy the powers of darkness because we want we want the bride of Christ. Come on, to be blessed. We want to fight for the church. So I want you to. I don't think I've ever preached that song of Solomon in the last year, year and a half, two years now almost. I'm going to preach out the new international version tonight. I'm going to preach th this and because I've written a commentary on every verse of Song of Solomon. I should know this by heart. But I was, I was on the plane this morning and this afternoon and I began to refresh my heart about these wonderful verses. I'm going to begin in verse 1. Now let me just say this. This is Jesus talking to his bride. He's talking to the church right now. He says, I have come into my garden. My sister, my bride, have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb and my honey. I have drunk my wine and my milk. Eat, O oh friends, and drink. Drink your fill of love. Verse 2. Listen to this. This is her responding. This is her responding to the invitation of Jesus and this is what she says. I slept. Everybody say, I slept. I slept. I don't know about you, but I want to awaken the city of Tucson. I want, the, I want to awaken the church in the city of Tucson, and I want to awaken the people in the city of Tucson. But notice her condition. She's asleep. And it's interesting that God calls upon us not at the most convenient time. He calls upon us at the inconvenient times. I'm asleep. We talk about the fact we've heard this, that sometimes the church is asleep. People are asleep. And how many know the enemy comes at night to steal, kill, and destroy? But he goes, she says, I slept. But listen to this. But my heart was awake. Listen, my beloved is knocking. This is exactly what she's saying. She's saying, listen, I was sleeping, but my heart was awakened. But all of a sudden, I heard the knock. Everybody say, heard the knock. How many know that Revelation 3.20 says, I stand at the door and knock. Will any man open the door and, and let me in? I'll come in and he, he, he with him and he with me. You know what? God's knocking on the heart. I felt in worship tonight that God was knocking on our hearts. Because, listen, that's why we've got to open our heart to God. And notice this. Listen, my beloved is knocking. This is what she said. Open, this is him talking. Open to me. But listen, my sister, my darling, my dove, my flawless one. Basically, he doesn't say, oh, you're lazy. You're no good. 
I don't want you. Even though in, the, in your conditions, you may not be where he wants you to be. He doesn't speak words of death over us. He calls us and gives us an identity. He says, my head is dripped with dew, my hair with the dampness of the night. And I'm getting somewhere. But then she says, I have taken off my robe. Must I put it on again? I've washed my feet. Must I sew them again? What is she talking about? Because back in those days, what they would do is before you went to bed, because they wore sandals, you would wash your feet. Mm -hmm. And so to get out of bed, that she had to get her feet dirty again. But let me ask you, how many are willing to obey God even if it causes you to get your feet dirty? Right, come on. How many are willing to step into something? Come on, uh, well, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm in rest mode. I'm in, I, I, I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm resting right now. But see, he's knocking. Right. He's knocking. See, because basically what she's doing, Meliana, is she's actually making excuses. You know what? I want to get to the place in my Christian walk. If you're watching online, I want to give the impression that I'm without excuses because it's not just anybody knocking; it's Jesus knocking. See, see, see when when let me, let me tell you when we do the announcements about getting involved and going to prayer and all those things that we do as a church. It is not it is not Veronica making the announcement. Right. God's using her voice. It's actually God knocking on the door of our heart, uh -huh. saying, I want to come in. Yeah. I know it's an inconvenience. Yeah. I know it's going to cost you your time. Yeah. I know you're going to get your feet dirty. But here, I'm the one knocking. Right. I mean, we would knock to the door if it was a president. If we knock the door if it was a celebrity, we'd knock the door if, if somebody was coming in to hand us a million dollars. But how many know it's more important to answer the door of the Lord? Answer the knock. Answer the knock. And so he says, I, I have taken off my robe again. Must I wash it again? So she, she hesitates. She, she makes these excuses. But listen, this, this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Verse 4. My beloved thrust his hand through the latch opening. I see that as a prophetic promise. That when people or myself have made an excuses, he's so in love with us that he's going to break it. How many want God to thrust his hand through the city of Tucson? Yes. Who people who live in the close to him, who have been closed the door, God, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want to thrust my hand through the latch opening. And I love this. My heart began to pound for him. Say this. My heart, my heart began, began to pound for him. In other words, what he's saying, what she's saying is that, I, I, I don't know about you, but but I had a little high blood pressure. But she's not, it's not high blood pressure. What it means is that she was anticipating his presence. Come on. And she could feel him in her heart because you know what? Because he was getting closer to her and, and it, because he thrust his hand. Let me just tell you, when we see a miracle, he thrust his hand. When we see a salvation, he thrust his hand. When we see a sign, he thrust his hand. Oh God, thrust your hand through America. Thrust your hand through our homes. Oh God, thrust your hand through our schools. Thrust your hand through our workplace. Oh God, thrust your hand, come on, through the citadel. Put your hand on it. Put your hand. Put your hand. Yes, Lord. Because let me just tell you, you know what has kept me all these years for now three decades? It is not because we travel all the time. That's exhausting. But at the end of the day, when I get into God's presence, my heart begins to pound for him. When I begin, I, my, I, I was tired when I walked in here. I was exhausted when I, I've been preaching every night. Well, I, I, I was exhausted when I walked in here, but as, as soon as Nipsey and Bella began to worship, Come on. what God did is God thrust his hand through my tired heart. Oh, man, goodness. You know, and something happened. Yes, oh, God. Oh. Just, I arose 
for my beloved. My hands drip with myrrh, my fingers flowing with myrrh because you know, let me just tell you when you on the handles of the boat, so this is what happens. See, when we respond, there's an anointing released on us. There's an anointing. When we respond to the invitation that God gives us, yes, Lord. there's an anointing that's released. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say something. This church is going to have an anointing to cast yeah. demons out, yes. heal the sick, and preach the gospel. Yes, Lord. Well, come on. There's an anointing released. There's an anointing in the house released when I open the door and answer to his knock. And when there's an anointing that is released, we're going to get a reputation where people are going to come here, in here oppressed and held captive by demons and walk out of this sanctuary set free. Come on. And you hear what I'm saying? Because there's an anointing that is released in the atmosphere. How about what the anointing? Because when I say yes to Jesus, he rewards me by putting an anointing. That's why when Meliana says, obey the Lord. Oh, don't make an excuse no matter what it is. Obey the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, this is what she said. Listen to this, verse 6. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had left. He was gone. My heart sank in his departure. I looked for him, but could not find him. Mm -hmm. I called him, but he did not answer. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Every single believer goes through that. Mm -hmm. Lord, I respond to you. Mm -hmm. I worship you. I tithe, I give, I... I pray early in the morning, I do, I serve, I teach, I do what I can. And then when I make a move for you, with you, I don't find you. Where are you? Where's your presence? Where's the touch? Because think about this. She, she's anticipating that he's going to be there as she opens the door and he's gone. How I ever felt like, God, where are you? Right, yeah. God, where are you? Where are you? Yeah. We've all gone through the God, where are you? Right. I felt like that many times in my life. Right. But just because I felt right. that he wasn't there mm -hmm. isn't gonna stop me from seeking out. Come on. That's just it. because, just because I didn't get up like I should, I'm not gonna let my mistakes or my failure. Stop me from seeking him. Right. Because my Bible says that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Yes. Yeah. And this is something that hit me. And I'm going to switch translations. Because I told you earlier when I started that whether someone gets saved or the church grows, if all that's here, I'm okay. As long as we learn that that covenant is greater than the conflict. Mm -hmm. As long as we learn the character of God, I'm okay. Right. But this is the third one, Francisco. Because this is what happens. She's hungry, man. Mm -hmm. She's pursuing God. She got a little anointing. She wants more. She wants more. She doesn't just want a, a touch. She wants this person. Yes. She doesn't want to just fall out. She wants yes. to fall in love. Yes, Jesus. She doesn't want to just get slain or get a promotion. She wants She wants to encounter God every yes, single day. God. But notice what it says in verse 7. It, 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 said, it says in, in verse 7 that, that the watchman who made the rounds in the city found me. Everybody say watchmen. Watchmen. you got to understand the context of what the watchmen are. The watchmen are like pastors and leaders and prophets and people that watch over our spiritual life, intercessors, people that have influence. So they, so here's what they do. She's, she's running after God. It's a, it speaks of a believer running after the Lord. 
hungry. She got a little bit annoying, but she wants him. She wants the power of God. She wants to experience God. And, 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 they, and they go about the city in this place, and, and she went out, and, and he's gone. And guess what happened? They struck me, and they wounded me. Right. How many in this house tonight have been wounded by the church? Right. right. Wounded by the body of Christ. Because he or she, she's so hungry for God. It speaks of a believer, so hungry for God. Go to the pastor yeah. and instead of the pastor encouraging yeah. and, and empowering, yeah. giving, the, giving the believer the opportunity, the pastor strikes them yeah. and wounds them. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Because let me just yeah. tell you, I, I can tell you that there yeah. is no church yeah. that that does not happen where people get wounded by another individual that you thought yeah. was there to guide me spiritually yeah. they wounded me they struck me yeah. you know and let me just tell you over the years yeah. over the years Melian and I have been struck and wounded by yeah. by leaders mm -hmm. see here's the thing God allows it. Yes. <laughs> yes. God allows, God allows it. those things. God allows it because he wants yeah. you to test whether am I going to get so wounded that I stop seeking. Come on. Come am on. I going to get so hurt yeah. by the church yeah. and by who, who I looked up to yeah. guide me. Come on. That, because, I'm, because I'm going to tell you, they're men too. They're yes. women too. They're human. They're human. Yeah. yeah. And they may not understand my passion. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you something? When I first started, this happened. Yeah. This happened. This was three decades ago. And I came back to the, I, I left Maui and came back to to Maui for a few weeks just to be at the service. I've been traveling mm -hmm. three months. We had a great time. And one of our my intercessor friends mm -hmm. come up to talk to me. And she tells me, Prophet John, you know, I, I was in prayer meeting the other day. And I won't mention names. I was in prayer meeting the other day and I mentioned you to pray for you and your wife as you were on the road. And, and then when I mentioned your name, one of the pastors, one of the leaders said, oh, he's no longer a part of us. Now see, I want to tell you something. Like here I was, I'm, I'm a tither. Here might do nothing but a blessing. And they say. I have a choice. Right. I have a choice. Right. What they said doesn't have to get into my head yeah. where I actually lose my salvation. Come on. Oh, come, come on. on. Can I take off my jacket? I'm yes. I'm getting hot. <laughs> I'm getting hot. I didn't dress. I didn't dress up. I was on the plane all day. But anyway, anyway, I, 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 I was, I was so. I, I had to, I had to say, I had to check my heart. Yeah. I had to check my heart because, because, because if I get wounded, yeah. Guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna cause friction in the relationship. So guess what I'm doing? Instead of chasing Jesus, I'm gonna chase them. Yeah. Oh, come on. Instead of going after the presence of God, I'm going to go after them and I'm going to try to vindicate myself. Right. It's a waste of time. Which is absolutely, Meliana, a waste of time. Right. It's a complete waste of time. And, and you know what? Uh, I just said, oh, that's what they said. And I'm not saying that I didn't feel it or didn't hurt it, but I never to this day have ever addressed the person. No. You know why? Because that's not my vision. That's not my vision. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. 
That was not my plan. Because here's what we can do. We can be struck and wounded. Yeah. Here she was. She, was I, I, she, she, God knocked on the door. She yeah. responded like she should have. Yeah. But then she gets up. He leaves the little anointing and leaves. But now she's on pursuit. I got to find it. Right. I can't live. I got to live a radical Christianity. Yeah. I can't live a casual Christianity. I can't live like everybody else who gets offended all the time. See, we don't we don't get offended, we take offense. I choose to take it. I choose to take it. She could have got offended at the watchman. I could have got offended at the watchman. I should have got offended at the leader, but I knew something in my heart. If I get offended at the leader, then my word will be tainted and I will open the door to the demonic. Come on. Right. But there's a key because because the, this is what she said. This is how we, this is the cure to offense. This is what cured it. Mm -hmm. The watchmen, they, who make the rounds and see, found me, they struck me, they wounded me, those guardsmen on the wall, they took my shawl away from me. In other words, they took my mantle. Mm -hmm. They didn't give me a position in the church. They didn't pray for the prophet and his family and recognize me, and they didn't give me a title, and man, forget it. <laughs> but I love what she said. But then she tells the entire body of Christ. It's yeah. so like anytime you hear the word daughters of Jerusalem, that's the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. She said, I adjourn you. I adjure you. Oh, oh, daughters of Jerusalem. If you find my beloved. Come on. If you find Jesus. See, <laughs> yeah. I'm not here to chase the watchman down. Right. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Pastor, I didn't like it. Yeah. Pastor, this didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. I'm not here. They're, 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 the watchmen are not my pursuit. Or anybody. And she says, now she turns. She's, in other words, she got to the place where she's unoffendable. Man, I tell you, man, I would, I would, I would, I would feel like we are the greatest church in America. Come on. Every person was unoffendable. unoffendable. Oh my gosh. This is I adjourn you, I adjourn you, O Dr. Susan, if you find my beloved, because that's what I'm going after. Yes. I'm not going after the watchman, I'm not going after the position. I, I don't care if I'm on the platform, I'm not like it with a pew in the platform. I'm just here to I just want to love. Okay? I just want to serve. Yes, Jesus. If you find my beloved, and as to what you will tell him. I'm lovesick. <laughs> For I am love sick. Jesus, thank you, Lord. I just want to. I read it before. Yeah. We read it before. Yes. More than once, we read it together. Yes. We wrote a book. We, we wrote a book on it. That's why yes. together, didn't we? Yes. I wrote it, or you wrote it. We did both. We wrote it. With the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. But basically, what she says. Listen. Listen, body of Christ. If you find Jesus, who's I'm going on. That's it. That's what we go after. If you get there before I do, I want you to tell them something about me. Come on. I'm not offended at the watchman. Right. Right. I'm not offended at anyone. No. No. I'm not upset at anyone. No. Shouldn't. Tell him I'm love sick. Tell him I'm yes. love sick. Come on. Yes. You want to ask me? We're, I, yes, we're, I think that we would be a success yes. as a church. Yes, Lord. Yeah, we handle conflict, right? Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, we, we, we know the character of God. But at the end of the day, we're a group of lovesick worshipers. Love we're yeah. lovesick for God. Yeah. We're lovesick for God. And because we're lovesick for God, we go through stuff like everybody else. Yeah. We go through stuff in our family. Yeah. We go financial stuff. We go through health stuff in our health. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I am love sick. Come on. I'm love sick. Yeah, I'm love sick for his yeah. presence. Oh. I'm love sick for his power. Oh. I'm love sick oh. for his freedom. I'm love sick oh. for his glory. Oh. I'm love sick for yes. revival. Oh. I'm love sick for everything that God is. Yes. I'm love sick. Yes, Jesus. And I want to tell you right yes, now. Yes, Lord. I want to tell you right now. What gets me up in the morning. Honestly, yes, what gets me up in the morning. Yes, Jesus. Which causes me not to quit. Mm -hmm. 
Because let me just tell you, my, I'm just being transparent. My flesh wanted to stay in the hotel this morning. Yeah. I've been preaching every night. But when I wake up, no, I'm lovesick. Yes, Jesus. And when I'm lovesick, I'm not only lovesick for God, I'm lovesick for his bride. His people. I'm lovesick for his people. Yes, Lord. And it, and it motivates me. Yes, and then what it does is it gives me the confidence. I say, God, I'm lovesick. Yes, Father. When I am lovesick, yes, I don't get burnt out. No. I don't get weakened. I don't get offended. I don't quit because I'm lovesick. Come on. Yes. I'm lovesick for the city of Tucson. Yes. I'm lovesick for this people. I'm lovesick for these families. Yes. I'm lovesick. Yes. And yeah, I may get beat up on the way. Yes. Yes. I may even get beat up by my own leaders. Yeah. That's what happened to us. Mm -hmm. I may get beat up by leaders. Yeah. But I'm still lovesick. Come on. Yes. I may get leaders to call me a false prophet. Mm -hmm. Leaders that close doors on me. Mm -hmm. I had a leader. I had a leader one time. They, they, he's over 450 churches. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I invited him to, to which is a mistake. <laughs> when I look back on him, but I got him. Some pastor told me, you got to invite him. He's 40. He's 40. I had a check, but I went ahead and trusted him. Didn't really seek the Lord on it. So I invited him and had him speak one of the prophetic, we had a prophetic conference in near Fresno, California several years ago. And uh, we, uh, he came to the conference and he just spoke one message and then went back and he's over 450 churches. Mm -hmm. so it's a pretty big reach. He went at a pastor's meeting and said, don't have John Harkey at your church. Yeah. And a pastor's meeting. Mm -hmm. of, uh, of hundreds of pastors in their lives. And said, don't have John Harkey in your church. And I'll tell you why. Because when he preaches, he has two large mayonnaise jars up on the pulpit, by the pulpit, on the, on, on the stage, at one, one on the right and one on the left, and whoever puts a hundred dollars in the manage jar gets a prophecy. Got a prophetic word. That's what he said. He gets something. Yeah. I had about ten doors close on me immediately. Yeah. But guess what? I'm lovesick. Yeah, come on. I'm come lovesick. On. I'm lovesick. I'm lovesick. When I got the call. When I actually got the call yeah. that I that 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 man was saying those things, and I my phone was blowing up with people who had me, and they heard it, and they go, "What is going on, John? Are you having managed art?" I said, "No. I, 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 you think I'd be in a ministry if I had managed art? <laughs> I've never done that." And 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 and. And he closed doors on us. He beat me. He bruised me. He made my, in that particular group in Southern California, he made uh, my name like mud. But guess what? I'm lovesick. And why I'm lovesick? And because I'm lovesick, I'm still preaching, but he's not more. He's no more. He's out the ministry. He's not even in the ministry anymore. And then you know what I did? You know what I did? And I don't have time to get in the story. It's crazy. But he was exposed as a compulsive liar. The denomination stripped him of his ordination papers and kicked him out. He's no longer in the ministry. And, and I and guess what? When that happened to him, I called him. I called him and I prayed for him. You know why? Because I'm lovesick. Yeah. I'm lovesick. Yeah. I'm, I'm not angry. I'm not. I'm lovesick. See, see, this is what God's got to teach us. That when we're lovesick, this is exactly what happens. People can close doors on us. Yeah. But we're still, we're still in love with God. Yeah. We're, and we're because God's using those kinds of yeah. things to shape us yeah. in order that we would have a lovesick heart. Yeah. 
And if I've got a lovesick heart, Meliana, guess what? God, God's going to vindicate me. Yeah. He's my vindicator. Yeah. And you know, I have to tell you something right now. The good news is nine of those ten churches that he closed the door of, I've already been back. Yeah. Oh, come on. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? See, God turned the whole thing around, but had I begun to get angry and bitter, and, and, and even at the denomination and even at the leader, of course, I didn't like it, but but I but I get even they this is what <laughs> I remember that I remember the leader above him when they did this investigation about him calls me up. Yeah. He says, John, can you write a letter? Telling us everything he did to you. And this is what I said. Yeah. I said, Linda, I said, I said, I said, um, sir, I'm sorry. Maybe that's how you operate, write letters about people. But I'm too busy writing sermons to write that letter. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm too busy. I'm preaching every night. I don't have time to write these letters. I don't write these letters about what he did to me. Or try to have an investigation about it. I don't have. I'm love sick. How many are love sick tonight? How many want? I want the impartation of being love sick. Because when I get an impartation that I am love sick, can you imagine if we had people, Meliana? If everyone in this. Yeah. I mean, Bella's love sick. Yeah. Come on. I mean, I, 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 we went to bed at one o'clock, but Meliana's got a lot of energy, a little bit more energy than me. <laughs> she wakes up and she goes, honey, you should have heard Bella pray. Yeah. You should have yeah. woke me up. <laughs> you should have woke me up, you know. Got kids praying. Yeah. What church just has 10 year olds praying? Come on. Pray. Come on. Jesus. Because God is yes. raising up oh. lovesick kids, yes. lovesick believers, Come on. and lovesick people yes. will cast yes. demons out, heal the sick, yes. preach the gospel. Can I hear an amen right now? Come on and give God a shout of praise. Because here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen tonight. In this room, there's going to be an impartation yes. of a love sick heart. Yes. We're going to be people that are love sick. See, when I'm love sick, sin doesn't interest me. I'm not even interested in it. I'm not even interested in committing sin and see, God, how far can I, how close can I get to sin and not lose my salvation? I'm not even interested in sin. I'm not interested in the things that God hates. I'm not even interested yeah. in it. Why? Because something right. has happened in here right. is ignited a love sick heart. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. I, and so when you have a love sick heart, your heart is burning. Yes. Burning to do something for the Lord, burning to serve, burning to yes. give, burning to have the character of God that your heart is love sick. Yes, Lord. And people might say, well, John, why, why are you going to give, why do we have giveaways, bikes and iPads and Starbucks gift cards? Well, I got to get them there because he said compel them to come in. Are you hearing me? Compel them. To, yes, I mean, compel. I mean, that word compel is do whatever you can to get them to come. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Compel them to come in. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because I believe if we can get them in, they get an impartation of a love city. Yes. How many yes. might want an impartation of a love sick heart? How many want an impartation of a love sick heart? Yes. Lift your hands up to heaven right now. Father, we thank you for your word. It's a lamp unto our feet. And it's a light upon our very path. We thank you right now, Father, that in this room, even tonight, and Robert, could I have you move this book here for me? Even tonight, their hands are going to be laid on people because there's going to be an impartation of a lovesick heart. Because we're going to make sure that every single person at the Citadel 
They may not do it right. They may not sing it right. They may not, do, they may not be perfect in all their ways. But they are going to have a lovesick heart. That's going to be that Catholic vision. We're, we're lovesick worshipers. We're lovesick believers. We're sick with love with you. And that's why we're unoffendable. Yes, that's why we love the way we do. Because we're so in love with you. I believe the NIV says that, that she was faint with love. Faint with love, yes. I'm just so in love that I don't have time to worry, you know, fix, wow. try to worry about my wounds. I got wounded in the last church. <laughs> oh, come on. I got wounded in the church before that. And I, and I, I don't know if I can trust the pastor now. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if I can do this. And I'm just mm -hmm. real depressed. No, I'm lovesick. Why? I'm lovesick. Why? If you're in this room tonight, and you want a lovesick heart, I want you to stand right now. I want you to stand right now. If you're in this room tonight, and you want a lovesick heart. Yes, Jesus. I want you to stand right now. Yes, Lord. I want you to stand right now. I want you to stand right now. You want a lovesick heart. And if you're in this room tonight, and you say, Preacher, Brother John, well, actually, I'm not speaking to you as a prophet. I'm speaking to you as a pastor. Because I would rather I would rather pastor a congregation that are lovesick. Come on. Yeah. Than pastor a congregation that have no love for God and no love for God. Right. And if I could just get a handful of lovesick people. Yes. You know, can I tell you something? Jesus invested in twelve. Yeah. Yeah. One bachelor. Twelve. Yeah. And those eleven. Those are left. They can't love sick believers. Mm -hmm. Turn the world upside down. Yes. Peter, do you love me? Come on. Peter, yeah. I am. Yes, Lord. Here, Peter, deny him. Mm -hmm. That God turned him into a love sick apostle. That, that, that Luke wrote about the first half of the book of Acts is about Peter, the last half is about Paul. Because of his love sick heart. You know what God put on him? Put him on me on shadow. Mm -hmm. And whenever he walked by, a demon would cast out as he walked by. This the shadow hit him and the demon would go. That's a lot easier than barf bags. Come on, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot easier than barf bags, man. Yeah. Your shadow, my, my shadow just hits him. Why? Because he was love sick. Mm -hmm. If you're in this room tonight, you want an impartation. You want to be love sick on the count of three. I want you to run in this altar right now. One, two, three. Come right now. I want to. I want a love sick heart. I want to. I want to be love sick for God. I want to be. I, I, I want that. I want that. In fact, really, we're all at the end of the day. Are we love sick? You know, I, I'm not going to go to heaven with my house in Florida and my, and my house in in, in, in Tucson. I'm not going to heaven with that. I'm not even going to heaven with my ministry, really. But I will go to heaven and heaven with a love sick heart. Come on. If I'm talking about eternity, come closer. We've got people come come all the way. I'm trying to get them to help me out. Come all the way up to the front. All the way up to 